So, I don't know how well it's going to show up. Same here. Here. Even as possible. One more pack, I'm gonna let it set for a minute to pack up. You don't want to put too much paint all at once because this the paint likes to gas out. That's where you get fish eyes and bubbles. So I'm gonna give myself a few minutes of a break and then I'm gonna lay some more. Alright, back to do some more. Do a little cross hatch this time. may actually have to stand the guitar up. When the can gets low, it's gonna have problems to wanna to spray. Actually, yeah, let me go get a hook. The reason why now I wanna hang it is because when spray can gets low it's going to be a lot harder to deal with we get another hook to get that lower put one here there we go how's that perfect So now, and another pass. Now this might take me the full, this full can just to achieve the color that I want. More. I'm getting more comfortable with the tan it means I can actually go a little bit closer and a little bit longer. Okay, I'm gonna let this set up. Again for another few minutes and play with the can some more. Back for some more coats. 
You know, the other thing that's neat about, you know, spraying candy, you don't have to like, I, I use this, like a silver base coat underneath this. That's kind of common, but you can experiment. Um, even just doing like painting it black and going the green over it. It'll, it's like very dark, but like when the light reflects off it, you, you kind of like see green in different places. It creates an illusion. Or if you like just do a different color, like maybe a blue or a red, it might turn it into a, make it look almost purple. -ish. Um, what's also like really neat, let's say if you have a candy red, do a yellow base coat and that really makes it like a red pop. Or even if you go green on green or red on red or whatever, you can kind of get, you know, another deep look. It, it's fun to experiment. There, it's like doing a transparent over a different color or whatever. You can have so much fun with it. But basically all, like I said in the beginning, all it is is a colored clear coat. All right, so put on some more. And if you're wondering, I'm doing a 50-50 overlap. What that means is I'm going halfway over my, my spray pattern. So if my spray pattern is like this, I'm going half or more like Half, er, er, half, 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 half. That's what a 50-50 is. You can go 60-40 or whatever. But in the beginning, like I, like I showed, I started with just going to light over the whole thing. Basically, I was also gonna get comfortable with it. This color is really starting to turn out nicely. More 50-50. Plus I'm building it up just so I can also do, you know, another 1500 grit sanding before the next stage. I remember I just did double pass on this one. So maybe a double hit on this one. Make sure it looks the same, looks the same. That's really starting to look beautiful. In case you're wondering why am I not doing this, it's gonna be a two-tone. Basically the back and the sides are gonna be black. That's gonna be the next thing. And then it'll get clear coated. But I wanna get this part done first. Just because. more I mean I want this thing to be deep and I want a dark green out of this so let me go two full passes another two on this one Beautimus. Yeah, it's getting darker. Definitely getting darker. But I still want to go a little bit more. I'm kind of like trying to achieve that forest green look. And yet I can still see that airbrush pattern that I did. You know, the first few coats, it, the airbrush pattern really stood out, but, I, but as I'm burying it, it's like, it's getting buried a little bit more. I just wanted a hint of it there. Kind of glad I went heavier on that airbrush pattern because by the time I would've got it this dark, if I did it too light, you never would have seen it. I would have just erased it. But I just only wanted a hint of it there. It's like, when you really look at the guitar, it's like, oh, what is that? It 
in the way the pattern, the airbrush pattern I did, it almost looks 3D-ish. Especially because, you know, when I did it at an angle, it gave it, the, it more of a shadow effect. Kind of like, almost holographic. For some reason I see fine bits of dust on it, probably a couple little things blown in the air. But it's good that I'm actually going really heavy, so I'll just knock that down with another piece of 150. I'm just barely touching it. Let's do another good coat. Getting close. Some left. I'm hopefully I'm gonna try up stroke this way. We get more into the middle where it's gonna be mostly exposed. Yeah, we're starting to run out of paint. Might do it. I think that's it. I think that's it. So, I don't know how well it's gonna show up. Take this down, set it here, let it lay flat. Okay, so next thing is to let it fully dry and fully cure, and then we're gonna do black. So now we're ready to do the next step, and that's to put the black paint on it. So I got the green part covered, even though some of the black is gonna be on here, but I'm mainly focusing is all around the edge and on the back. And then after that, I'm gonna carefully let the setup, then, you know, remove this, get the airbrush out, and I'm gonna actually do a thin fade border. Uh, not like you see on, on a, like on a Strat where their sunburst is pretty much pretty thick. I'm thinking about like a finger width, half inch, three quarter inch uh, fade. So time to power up the fan and start painting. All right, here we go. We do a little test. Doing my edges first. Just down so I can get over here.
That hurt. Giving it feel a thick coat of this black. This black is is kind of a urethane. Um, I'm not exactly sure exactly what it is truly made out of. I know that kind of sounds dumb. I'm a professional and I don't know what it is. I just know what I need. I typically use this for. It's a product um, I I got from my work. It's called Endura. This stuff on uh, trophy truck chassis, basically. Very dual, very hard durable paints. Too hard, takes an activator. This stuff is like rock hard when it dries. Which is kind of like why I'm using this. But I'm not also giving it pretty decent amount because I'm going to end up taking some of it off. So I'm going to it's going to give me a little bit of a you know, orange peel pattern. I didn't reduce this at all. Uh, at least if I am going to, if I need to reduce this, which I will, so I'm going to use the same stuff on my airbrush. Uh, just reduce the mask stuff. I think this is enough for this. So, let's go ahead and take this stuff out. Reduce it down. Nothing more of work for an airbrush. And use the part on the neck. As you can see, I took the front end off. So now I'm gonna do a border. Got my airbrush ready to go. Let's see how this goes. I'm gonna start here. I know you can't, cannot see what I'm doing right here and the reason why is because this other part it was kind of in the shadow so it was like me painting in the dark. And a little more paint in here. We'll go down a little. to go on my knees for this one because what I'm kind of doing is I'm kind of painting the edge that's what I'm aiming for A little bit more. I 
Like I said, I'm just literally using the extra that I had mixed up for the body and I'm just, I just reduced it really heavy. And I reduced it with acetone. Thickness is even, a little bit thick around the bevel. This black Endura is kind of funky. We've always had kind of problems with it. Like for some reason it'll go like a really flat color to a satin color or the sheen actually. It's what it's kind of doing now, but that really ain't gonna be a problem because I'm gonna clear coat it anyways. So it'll all eventually be glossy. It just needs to be black. Sorry if you can't see this angle, it's just because I this angle for me is like I get a good a good uh, eyesight on it. One thing you look for is like you look on how wet it like how wet the paint is. I could paint forever, but I think that's enough. So, maybe you can see it like this. The Green Goblin. This should have went ahead and kind of reduced it for this gun. Um, yeah, a little ledge. But that's okay, I kind of thickened it up where I can actually break down the orange peel without cutting all the way through. And then the next step is just throwing on some clear. 